So now I will start. So now at the point where I just, the only thing I need to do is select the files and upload them to the data set. So I will click here where it says view details to kind of dive into the experiment. And I will um, start adding data. So I will go to my first replicate and there I will add the data corresponding to that specific sample. And what I want to show here, so when you go to the, I will click, go into the replicate. And when we go to the replicate record, we see that there's different sections for different type of data. So if you were uploading sequencing data, raw sequencing data, last fast, fast files, you were uploading in this section. If you were uploading process data, like a BAM file or, or from, or, you know, matrix file from a single cell, uh, data set you will upload in this section. If you have big wig files that you want visualize in the genome browser, you will allow them in here. So since in this experiment, in this replica, we are adding imaging data, I will go to the imaging section and try to add a file in here. Now there's, there I want to say, mention something that we have two main ways of adding data to FaceBase. One is through the browser, like I'm going to show you right now. And the other one is using a bulk upload. So you, you, and I will show you something about that too. So you can basically, if you have a large number of, a large collection of files, if you have like more than 20 or so, it probably gets, you know, too, uh, you know, um, time consuming to add it one by one through your browser. So we have a mechanism to do a batch upload. We have, we provide a tool to do a batch upload of all those files that not only uh, is fast, but it's also more, you know, if, if you get disconnected, it, it basically continues uploading from where it left off. So it's, it's way more robust in terms of uploading data. But anyways, let me show you how to add a simple uh, imaging data file to this replicate. So I will click add records. I will, you know, you can enter the anatomy, but if you already did before, you can select different type of devices. If you have that information, you can add details about your equipment. But the most important part is basically just go to the section which says file. You select, click select file. You, let's say I'm gonna select this file. I will select the type of file, which is a T file. So I will search here in my vocabulary for different uh, data files, I will select div. I will say that it was selected now and then click save. And then again, it will upload that file. And that file, boom, it's already uploaded. So now if I navigate back to the data set, I see that I have uploaded one file. One file is uh, being uploaded to the, to the data set. And uh, so the next step will be to continue doing the same for the other two replicates. So I think that uh, I have enough time so that I can show you how to how you will upload. If you don't have questions at this point, I would like to show you how you will probably try to use this tool, the our upload tool, to upload the other files that I have. So if that's okay, I think I have enough time. I can do that. Um, <clears throat> Any questions at this point? Okay, so let me show you something here. In our documentation, if you go to for contributors, uploading data files, we describe very well the process of uploading files using our tool that we call the Deriva Upload Tool. And the there are basically two steps involved in doing this. First one is generating a, a structure in your local computer, a file tree, where you will uh, put your data files inside in your computer. And the way you do that is you define one folder that the, the, the name of that folder is the record identifier for the data set that we just created, and then one subfolder for each replicate. And then under that folder, you enter subfolders for a different type of data. So if it's sequencing or process data, in my case, I have imaging data. So I will create an IMG folder 
and place my files in there. And then you basically go to the page for installing the Deriva clients. We have a, a, a page, a GitHub repository where you can directly download your uh, version for Mac or version for uh, Windows, or if you uh, run this in, on, if you want to run this on, on a Linux server, you can directly do a pip install and that will install the tool in your machine. So let me uh, go back here. So what I will do now, like I said, I will try to create this data, this file structure in my computer. So the data set that I just created, the record identifier is 64 KTQT. So I will copy that. I will go to my file explorer that I already have pre-organized the data. And then I will create one data set, one folder with that identifier. So I created a top level folder with the, that is named after that data set. And then I will do the same for each of the replicates. I will go to the first replicate. I will copy the record ID for that replicate. I will name my folder with that ID. I will do the same for the second one. And then the last one. Okay, so I have here, you can see, I created this sort of file, you know, file tree where the top level uh, folder is the ID of my data set, then one subfolder for each of the replicates, and under each of these folders, I created an IMG, and in there, I drop my actual file. So now I will attempt to, if I did that correctly, I will start my application. Once you download this uh, installer, the Deriva Client Tool installer, for example, in the Mac, it will create a folder in your applications. And then you, we have all the different tools that we provide. For example, the DB bag one that, that uh, uh, Rob talked about earlier is in there too. The one I will use now is the, what we call the Deriva Upload Tool. So I will launch that tool And uh, it's already configured to access our production server. The first thing I will do, I will log in using the same ID that I use to create a data set. It tells me that I authenticated successfully. So the next, the last thing to do is browse to the folder that I just created, which is the, the one of the ID of the data set. And it just basically goes, scans the files, and you click upload. And if I didn't do any errors, it will boop, boop, complete, and it uploaded the three files to the correct location. So now if I go back to my browser, sorry, and go to my data set, if I scroll down to the data elements, and refresh maybe, yeah, so now I see that all, th you know, you know, this, the, this first file is the one that I uploaded manually through the browser, and these next three ones are the ones that I just uploaded using the, uh, our batch upload tool. 
So in principle, you know, you can upload a pretty large number of records using the browser, uh, but if you have a large collection, it's, it's, it's probably a good idea to use the tool. And it, once you get used to it, it's not that complicated. Something I want to show, and I'll probably talk in the last in the in few minutes, is that if you if you see now here, in the first record, the first image that I uploaded, our uh, we have a pipeline. <clears throat> we have an imaging pipeline that once you upload the file, it automatically will try to process it. So, for example, typically if you upload a TIFF file, a regular browser will not be able to display it. But we have this pipeline that process that file and creates a visualization of that actual file. So in this case, the, the thumbnail is not showing yet, it's probably been uh, generated as we speak. But here, okay, here it is now. So you see that the imaging pipeline at this point has already processed the first file. It will do the same. If we, wait, if we were to wait a few more minutes, it will do the same to the other three. But you see it has generated a, a thumbnail of that uh, image and if we go down into the image it has generated the actual visualization using a, a sophisticated uh, image viewer that you can zoom in and you can do uh, change channels you know 